Hi everyone, welcome to tutorial 61 of our introductory Python for image processing tutorial series. In the last tutorials, we looked at the basics of pandas, so let's build on that in this tutorial just by looking at how to sort data. So let's jump into our spider IDE. And uh, as usual, let's uh, go ahead and start by importing the pandas uh, library. Again, the way we do that is import pandas as pd. Let's run this line. And then let's go ahead and read our data set uh, that we have been using uh, for the past uh, couple of tutorials. And uh, the way to read the CSV file is again pandas.readcsv and whatever the location is path uh, to the file. Let's run it and again, uh, Let's have a quick look at the data frame. This data frame has uh, seven columns, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the first column represents the index that pandas automatically assigned to each row. And the next one is labeled unnamed. This is basically uh, a column that has uh, the label or the text set one, set two, or set three, or set four, representing from which set this specific image came from. And the next column is the image numbers going all the way from image one to 100. And the next two columns are the result of manual counting of our nuclei. And the next three columns, the last three columns, are automated counting of nuclei. And you should realize that manual two here is, uh, uh, it's got only three numbers. After that, it's all blanks, which is not a number. And in manual, we have some blanks here. Everything else, we seem to have uh, a data field uh, pretty much OK. OK, so now what do we do? Uh, let's actually sort, for example, if you look at the manual, okay, just look at the manual column, okay, there is a value 92, 87, 104. If you just want to sort them from smallest to the largest or largest to the smallest, how do you do that? Well, it's pretty easy. Go ahead and do df, which is our original data frame, dot sort underscore values. And using what column? Using the column called manual and ascending equals to true. If you say ascending equals to false, that means uh, descending from large to the smaller. And I'm assigning this to a new data frame called DF2. That's all this is. And let's go ahead and run it. And if I go to DF2, it should start from, instead of starting from set one, image one, this one is starting from whatever, corresponding to the lowest value for manual, 80, 80, 81, 81, 82, and it should go all the way to, I think 120 is the highest right there. And there are some not a numbers and it didn't know what to do with not a number, so it just dumped them at the end. This is how you can sort the values. And again, this is as easy as this, that's it. Now, uh, oftentimes what you do is you do uh, sort them and then assign to a new data frame, right? Uh, just like we have done. And also, you probably don't want the entire data set. If your data set uh, has uh, 500 columns, you just want three columns because you want to study something. Uh, again, I covered this briefly in the last tutorial, but again, worth mentioning one more time. Let's say I want to create a new data frame with only the columns uh, titled uh, manual and auto, uh, whatever, threshold number two then uh, we just do df and do not forget this double square brackets okay go ahead and try single and see what happens so use this double and when i run this you should see our df3 and it should only have two columns okay and uh, to select a subset of rows again this can be also very useful uh, we have 100 of these again we going back to our data frame we have 100 of these but you say i don't care about these only 20 to 30 are the ones i care about then uh, uh, you just uh, you can assign this to a new data frame but i'm just printing so you can see how that looks like you're just doing df and then whatever the index numbers from 20 to 30 and this is where you're selecting it. Let's combine these two. I only want these two columns and then these rows. And it's pretty much df.loc, loc. LOC means, okay, uh, you're giving your row numbers uh, from 20 to 30 and then for these columns. And these columns are going into a square bracket. OK, uh, I'm pretty sure you'll make a few mistakes. And now even today, I make a lot of mistakes. Uh, I work with uh, Pandas Data Frame almost on a weekly basis, maybe not on daily basis, but still sometimes I mess up with the square bracket. So it's uh, but but it comes uh, with some practice. So let's go ahead and run this and assign it to a new data frame called DF4. And if you open DF4, it should only have values from 20 to 30 and manual and auto threshold. So this is how you can do your subsetting, your sorting. 
And uh, uh, now let's go back to our original data frame. Okay, our original data frame has everything in there. And uh, let's say, okay, for my uh, first column where we have the set numbers, right? I keep closing this, but let me leave this open. We have all of these. I just want to work with set two and nothing else. In the previous tutorial, I showed you how to drop one of these sets, but now let's say I just want set two, okay? Some of these are worth repeating. That's exactly why I'm doing this because these are everyday things that you would be doing once you start working with pandas. Okay, so the way you do that is uh, I'm creating a new data frame called set to underscore data frame, representing that, uh, okay, this contains only the values from set two, is nothing but our original data frame where the column name unnamed zero, the values are equal to set two, okay? So this can be any text, any number, anything. So whatever you want, just define the column name and then the value. So when you run this, you should have a new data frame up here called set to df and then this should be only set to and nothing else okay so uh, uh there and and there are a lot of statistics that you can actually do uh just type max min and uh see what happens so for example for manual when you do uh, max of df manual df is our original data frame it's going to i think report 120 because that's the maximum value right there there you go 120 okay and you can change this and see minimum and we saw that our minimum is uh 80. okay so minimum there and then our minimum should be 80. And again, explore other things that you can do with these pandas data frame. Again, there's no way I can show you every little thing that you really require for your specific uh, research purposes, but this hopefully provides a good overview. Okay, now, uh, since we are talking about sorting, we should, uh, and subsetting, we should look at a way of actually extracting values where certain condition holds true. In this case, the condition is, okay, the value is equal to two. But if you have integers or floating point numbers, then you can easily say, okay, if my manual count is higher than 100, now I wanna save those as uh, a new column in this case. Uh, so uh, let's run this. So here, what I'm trying to do is with my origin to my original data frame, I'm adding a new column called high low, okay? Just by defining this in the quotations. And what is how to fill the values in there? If you remember in the last tutorial, we filled the values with a constant uh, date, okay? But it doesn't have to be that. There are many ways that you can be creative to fill it based on your need, obviously. So how do we fill the values, uh, uh, the cell values within this high-low column? Well, look at the manual column and wherever there is a value higher than 100, uh, then that would be true. If it's less than 100, that would be false. So if we run this and open our, oh, by the way, I'm just doing this to our original data frame. You can assign this to a new data frame if you want. So let's go ahead and open our original data frame and you can see, okay, if the value is above 100, it would be true. So here it is 92, so it is false. Image to 87, false, 104, true. So you can actually now, instead of true or false, you can also define, okay, if it's greater than 100, say high count, and less than 100, say uh, add a value called low count, and then when you plot it, you can uh, actually have plots where you have high counts and low counts, and it makes your life easy for when it comes to plotting. Um, I just showed you one condition here. Of course, you can make multiple conditions. You can say, okay, if my manual count is greater than 100 and auto count is less than 100, uh, then save all of that into a new data frame, okay? So you can have multiple conditions and you put that with your ampersand. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. And now our DF6 data set has uh, uh, 46 of these uh, uh, rows. So what this is telling me is uh, there are certain images that are counted to be higher than 100 uh, by ma manual process, but then they're giving less than 100 in automated process. So that's what this is. And if you want, you can open this data frame and have a quick look. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, just to finish this off, let's actually clear off all the variables so we can again start with a clean slate. Let's finish this by iterating through 
each value in the list. This is uh, something that we would like to do oftentimes, right? I mean, you have, let's say, five different columns and you want to do add the first two and subtract the third one from the first two and so on. So if you want to do math between the columns, it's pretty easy, actually. So you need to, again, let's go ahead and import our data set just like uh, we normally do. And now I'm going to use, again, anytime you iterate through a list, what do you do? You use a for loop, right? So it's the same thing here. You're iterating through each entry here. So we are going to use for loop. For index and row in my df.iter rows, okay, now uh, we are iterating through the rows. Again, there are multiple ways of doing that. I'm, I'll uh, show a couple more in the next few tutorials. So now I'm going to calculate something called average auto. So what I'm trying to do here is, remember we have these three auto columns auto two, auto three, and auto four. I just want to get an average of those three and compare them with my manual, okay, and see what we get. So how do we average these three? Well, the easiest way is add these three and then divide by three. So that's exactly what I'm trying to do here. So uh, my average auto is row, okay? It's extracting row there, row, auto threshold two, auto threshold three, auto threshold four, add them and divide by three. And then go ahead and print average auto again this is going to be a floating point number because we are averaging it go ahead and round it so it's easy for us to compare and then also print the manual value corresponding to that specific uh, specific row so we can just look at the comparison right there okay so that's uh, again uh, please go ahead I'll make this code available please look at the description so you can copy the code and you can experiment with uh, the code yourself so there you go so on the right hand side you can see uh, we are printing the average value Again, uh, average value 80 right there, and with automated, uh, with manual, we got 92. Average value of automation is 76, manual 87. Now, you can also define a function that does something. So, for example, a function that takes a value and does something, you know, exponential of that value or uh, whatever, and then you can actually go and identify the column, df manual. All you need to do is dot apply and that function. That's it. It's very easy. And I'll uh, see if I can uh, squeeze that part into one of the next uh, upcoming tutorials. Thank you very much again for watching, uh, watching this tutorial. And please go ahead and subscribe to this channel. Let's meet in the next tutorial and uh, talk about grouping of our data.